What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we continue with part two of best weight exercises to improve your calisthenics journey, improve calisthenics skills, and reduces your chances of getting injured from body weight training. Without further ado, let's get to the video. All right, family, before we begin, I want you guys to check part one. If you haven't checked it, I'm gonna link it up right here. There I have my top five weight exercises. Today, we're only gonna be looking at three since I really wanna get this video short. So if you want part three, leave it in the comment section down below and we'll make sure to cover that. With that being said, before we begin, I wanna mention that we are running a Halloween sale where you can save four months on the SM Online Academy. All the information is gonna be down in the description. The sale is from today, Thursday, all the way till Sunday. Again, to save four months on yearly membership to the SM Academy. With that out of the way, let's get to the first exercise, which is going to be trap three races or double Y races actually. So the name comes from, we're making a Y with our hands. I'm gonna first demonstrate it without weight. And I actually recommend that you guys begin without weight first to understand the motion and then begin adding weight. The weight that I'm using is five pounds and I really recommend to even begin with one or two pounds and build your way up to five pounds. I would say maximum to 10 pounds is more than enough. It's a pretty, intense exercise and we're working on very small muscles so they respond actually very well to high reps with a low weight. The exercise is seated in a bench or any elevations that you can find that way we have room to move our arms. You're gonna bend over keeping your back flat not rounding. From here your arms relax down. This is the initial position. Before we raise into a Y, and this is the exercise, we're going to first retract the scapula and depress the scapula, and then we're going to raise. We're gonna hold for like two seconds. One, two, and we're gonna control that negative, keeping the scapula depressed, avoiding that shrugging of the shoulders for ideally two to four seconds. Begin with two seconds and then increase that negative portion to four seconds. So the tempo would be four, zero, one, two, meaning four second negative and a two second pause at the top. What this exercise does, my face the other way, is working on your lower traps. So the anatomy of the traps, we have the upper traps which runs in this way when we shrug our shoulders in this way. Then we have the middle traps which run in this way and then the lower traps run downward in this way, actually forming like a V. So you have a V, you have the middle, and then you have the upper. This exercise focuses heavily on the lower traps, which pays a huge important role in scapula stability, especially in a upward rotation motion. It works uh, synergistically with the serratus to get the upward rotation of the scapula. You can imagine the scapula doing this motion right here. It is a very under-trained muscle, and even though in this exercise we're targeting all the fibers of the traps, it's very almost impossible to actually isolate one of those fibers. We're preferentiating those downward fibers, which is the lower traps, and they play a huge important role in the scapula stability. And as I mentioned on previous videos, scapula stability is probably one of the most important things when it comes to body weight training, to avoid injuries, and also to progress faster in calisthenics skills. The lower traps, maybe we can see it right here, are in the lower portion, forming like a V shape. And when we raise our arms overhead, keeping the scapula depressed, and retract it is when we activate the most do those lower fibers. And with that said, uh, the, to do this exercise effectively, you wanna keep the scapula depressed and retracted the entire time to really fire up those uh, trapped muscles as you raise your arms overhead. If you begin to shrug, you're gonna be involved in the upper traps. The exercise is not gonna be effective for the purpose that we're, wanna, we're trying to achieve. Let me demonstrate that with weight. And then we get into a couple of variations that you can do if you don't give you alternative basically for the exercise. So here you sit down, bend over row, bend over. I always say row after bend over. From here, retract, depress, then create external rotation with your arms. So the thumb is facing to the outside. Basically, you're getting almost into like a supination. From here, keep that external rotation, keep the shoulders depressed and retracted, raise up, as far as you can go, maybe this as far as you can go, or maybe you can get the full range of motion. Try not to compensate by arching your own spine or by shrugging. Try to keep 
the scapula in place. That's why I really recommend to begin with no weights at all and then add weight as you go. I'm gonna do another repetition without weight so you see what I mean by the external rotation. Basically, these are my thumbs. I'm gonna be doing like a, a good sign right here. And the thumbs are going to the outside as much as I possibly can. So you bring the shoulders, the, the shoulders in external rotation, so the thumbs to the outside, depress the scapula, retract the shoulders, and then raise up into a W position, keeping that rotation. What is gonna tend to happen is that as you go up in this external rotation, your thumbs are gonna collapse in, and you might not even notice it, but I really want you guys to exaggerate that extra rotation and keep the extra rotation as you go through the entire movement. As you see, my palms are basically facing up. It's like I'm doing a chin-up grip hanging instead of this motion right here. We're gonna get that external rotation. And again, it can happen also on the lowering down. You begin to see this happening. Really film yourselves and make sure the thumbs or the palms are always facing up and the thumbs are facing to the outside. Again, scapula depress and retract it. And from here, raise up for, for like two seconds and then calm down. Just think about there are many things that you can think when you're doing an exercise, but the main amount of focus that I want you guys to pay attention is keeping that external rotation, keeping the scapula depressed and retracted, and then simply lift your arms until they, they can go, holding it for a couple of seconds at the top. If you do this exercise right, I already feel it with only two reps, you're gonna feel a burn right here on the lower portion of your back. And again, it's gonna stabilize your scapula and it's gonna make all your body weight exercises so much easier, especially pull-ups and anything that is overhead. That being said, I'll see you in exercise number two. All right, family, we continue with the second exercise. This is going to improve your handstand holds as well as your handstand endurance and how much you can hold the handstand. It will also prevent injuries in your handstand journey as well as overall in body weight training. What I'm talking about is the reverse wrist curls. I actually show the exercise, then we go into the benefits and the applications of the exercise. So what I'm talking about here is wrist curls will be in this position right here where you work basically the flexor groups of your forearms we want to understand that all the movements of your wrist are caused by the muscles of your forearms both the flexors and the extensors the reverse wrist curls is putting the hand in a pronated grip you relax your fingers completely so you get into a flex position a stretching the extensor group of your forearms from here you raise up very lightweight as well you engage the extensor groups and then you come down. Tempo is similar as the one before and reps are similar. I didn't mention the reps on the previous one, but 12 to 15 reps, you can always begin obviously with eight to 12 until you build the, the endurance, uh, depending on how much you're using, but always try to find a way that you can do 12 to 15 repetitions to really condition these little small, small muscles that uh, works best with high repetitions and low weight. So from here, go up, Engage for like two seconds and then come down. So same tempo, four zero two, uh, four zero one two, which means four second negative, one second concentric, and two second hold. It will be something like one, one, two, one, two, three, four. One, one, two, one, two, three, four. With dumbbells is one way to do it. You guys call it the Terminator dumbbell, so thank you for that. We'll call it that way from now on. <laughs> and for you guys asking, it's adjustable dumbbells, that's why it's always the same. Back to the <laughs> exercise, kettlebells, it's, um, if you use a kettlebell, it will have the resistance always pulling you down. The dumbbell, the weight is distributed on both sides. If you grab a kettlebell and you do this exercise, as you slide your fingers as you go up, the resistance is always pulling you down, which might be more effective for the extensor group. Again, try both, see which one you feel best and also which equipment do you have access to. From here, the same motion, you just go up. And actually switch hands because my extensor is dying already. From here, relax, go up one or two seconds, then come down and go up one or two seconds, and then come down. Now, why do we wanna strengthen the extensor groups? I first mentioned the handstand. On a handstand, we're actually on a wrist extension position, but we're also using a lot of the flexor groups. But if your wrist extensors are weak, it might cause your wrist flexors to get overused. And when we overuse the, the wrist flexors, we get golfer's elbows, among many other things that we can get, but mostly uh, golfer's elbows. So 
if you're suffering from golfer's elbow, which I read on the comments that many of you have, I am suffering currently from that. And I'm incorporating those wrist curls because as you strengthen the extensor group of your forms, the flexor group of your forms get relaxed. So this is not only good for hamstrings, but if you are one that do a lot of pulling exercises, mostly pulling exercises, or basically calisthenics in general, we tend to overuse these amount of muscles and we don't use the brachial radialis and all the extensors of the wrist. So doing reverse wrist curls will offset the amount of work that we always do with our flexor group and will work on that extensor group and therefore, again, reduce the chances of getting injured and also improve the quality of your movement in bodyweight training specifically. With that being said, I'll see you on exercise number three. All right, family, for the third and last exercise, now we're going a bit heavier on the dumbbells and as well as some plates, I'm gonna get into that now, is going to be the farmer carries. Now, the farmer carries, let me actually demonstrate the exercise first. You grab some heavy ass dumbbells, eh, ideally some dumbbells that challenge you to walk around for at least 20 to 30 seconds is what I would recommend. And you can build it up to 60 seconds, depending if you wanna work more on the strength aspect of your grip, which is the main benefit of this, among others that I'm gonna mention. Or if you wanna work more on in the endurance aspect of your grip, you can go for 60 to 90 to even 120 seconds. For my carries, you grab, again, some dumbbells. These are 50 pound dumbbells, not that heavy, but kind of heavy. From here, you simply stun tall. You send the shoulders back, not fully retracted, but in a neutral, slightly retracted position. Chest is up, core is tight, and you simply begin walking forward. You smile, and then you begin walking back. <laughs> and then you smile again. Now, this exercise is good for a several reasons. The main one would be grip strength, which I mean, if you're a calisthenics athlete, you know how important is the grip. Yes, hanging will develop your grip. Yes, pulling will develop your grip. Many exercises will develop your grip, but sometimes we wanna add that little of extra weight and that extra additional overload to our flexor group in this case, which is the opposite of the extensor group on the previous exercise to really, really strengthen our grip. Again, working on that 20 to 30 seconds walk that you literally your forearms are like dying in your wrist or the 60 to 90, 120 second mark, depending on which one you wanna train the most. If you can hang and you cannot only hang for like 30 seconds, I would recommend to begin doing this for like 60 to 90 seconds to really build the endurance to hang for a little bit longer. It will also build, prevent injuries from over underusing actually the first a flexor group, which is another common injury in calisthenics, and then we get tennis elbow, but for that, to another video. And the firmer carries, I'm gonna show uh, two variations here, and then we're gonna be using some plates for another variation. Uh, two variations I wanna mention, before we get into the variations, the other benefits of the firmer carries is a, a core stabilization, you have to have the core stable, so you're not getting to flexion, and you need to keep that spine straight, and also your traps. Now, for the traps, I would say that if you are dominant in elevation, meaning that your upper traps tend to shrug, you tend to work, and you tend to get into this habit, or if you do a lot of handstands, you'll simply perform regular former carries, dropping the shoulders down, simply sending them back, and this will allow your shoulders to be more naturally depressed and not elevated. Now, if you're someone who does a lot of planches and a lot of rows and pull-ups and exercises that bring your shoulders down, or if you're naturally have your shoulders down and it's hard for you to get this range of motion of elevation, or you don't do simply enough handstands and you wanna better your handstands, you can simply, instead of being here relaxed, you're gonna shrug up and back to engage the upper traps. And again, you walk forward, you go around your house, if we're still on lockdown, <laughs> or around whichever place you have. One more time, if you are naturally shoulders down, you will do this variation right here, walking up, or if you're naturally, your shoulders tend to shrug up, then you simply let, allow gravity to do its work, so your shoulders naturally depress a little bit more. That's one variation with dumbbells. Now, another one would be with plates, which will basically strengthen more also your uh, flexor of your forearms, but now also the flexors of your fingers, which are also from your forearms. But in here, we're mostly working on this motion. Here, we're basically in a neutral position of our wrist and we are allowing our fingers to do all the work, which again can be underused for calisthenics and it will improve your calisthenics journey because a strong grip will 
better your place in the curtain. Uh, for the plate, you will grab it like this until basically it falls out and you do exactly the same exercise. Simply walk forward, around, go back until basically it slips after all. I mean, you don't have to go to failure on each rep, um, but if you're working towards endurance, I highly encourage you to go to failure uh, at least on the last set to incorporate this exercise and basically all the exercises that I mentioned uh, at the end of your workout, depending on the limitations that you have, if you want to work more on that scapular stability and you're, you are lacking scapular stability, then the trap three raises an amazing exercise. Uh, if you're lacking more that grip strength, then the farmer carries is an amazing exercise. Uh, if you have golfer's elbows or if you tend to do a lot of pulling exercises and not enough wrist extensor uh, motions, then the wrist curls is an amazing exercise. And also if you do a lot of handstands, by any means incorporate that exercise. Also, if you have pain on your wrist, it's also going to benefit you. With that being said, guys, this is the video. I wanted to keep it short for today. Let us know if you like this type of short videos or if you like the long 20 to 30 minute run. Let us know what else you wanna see on this channel. Like, share, subscribe if you're new to this channel. With that being said, I'll see you all next week. Much love. We're talking about a, a an exercise. Oh, <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.